Let's find the critical numbers of these six trig functions. We will specifically find the critical numbers that are in these stated intervals, except in problem three, where we will not restrict the interval at all. In each case, we will take the derivative and find where it is zero or undefined. Those are the critical points. There are timestamps in the description so you can skip around the problems as you please, and at the end of the video, I'll give you a couple more bonus problems you can try on your own. Beginning with problem one. As in every problem, we will begin by taking the derivative. The derivative of sine gives us cosine, and we want to keep the chain rule in mind. We might have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, but in this case, the derivative of the inside function is just one. So that's our derivative, f prime. We want to find where this doesn't exist and where it equals zero. Cosine is defined for all real numbers, so there is nowhere that this derivative does not exist. Thus, the only critical numbers will be where the derivative equals zero. So we will set the derivative cosine of x plus pi over four equal to zero. We then have to ask, what does the input of cosine have to be so that the output is zero. If you're taking calculus, you should have the unit circle memorized, but here it is so we can look at it together. Where does cosine equal zero? Well, if we make a quarter rotation of 90 degrees or pi over two radians, that's where the x coordinate on the unit circle, and thus cosine, is zero. Also, if we go three pi over two, we will again get a cosine of zero. And we could continue turning around the circle in this way, or we could even do it in the negative direction, but none of those additional possibilities will produce x values that are in our interval. So we have two possibilities, pi over two and three pi over two. We need the input x plus pi over four to equal pi over two, or three pi over two. X plus pi over four equaling pi over two would mean that X plus pi over four equals two pi over four, which means that X equals pi over four. That is in our interval. On the other hand, if X plus pi over four equals three pi over two, three pi over two is six pi over four. So this would mean that X equals 5 pi over 4, which again is in our interval. If you were doing this by yourself, you might want to set that input equal to 5 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. Those are additional values that would make this equal to 0. However, like I said, they produce x values that aren't in the domain, which is why I'm not going over them. So at this point, we are done. Those are the two critical numbers, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Those are the values of x that make the derivative of this function equal to zero. Moving on to problem two, f of theta equals secant theta. Again, we begin with the derivative. Hopefully you know the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta. Then we first ask, where does this derivative not exist? Hopefully you know what secant and tangent are in terms of sine and cosine. Secant is one over cosine, and tangent is sine over cosine. So where does the derivative not exist? Well, it doesn't exist where the denominator is zero, which is where cosine is zero. However, that's actually not important because remember the original function is secant, which is one over cosine theta. So if we set cosine theta equal to zero, we will find places where the derivative doesn't exist, but those places aren't even in the domain of the original function, so they're not relevant. Both the original function and the derivative have cosine in the denominator, so we can move on to setting the derivative equal to zero. Long story short, a critical number must be in the domain of the function. So we're setting the derivative now equal to zero. Again, it's useful to know what secant and tangent are. Secant's one over cosine, tangent is sine over cosine, so secant tangent is sine over cosine squared. So if we want this to be zero, we need the numerator, which is sine, 
to be zero. Where is sine zero? Well, that would be at an angle of zero. That's the Y coordinate on the unit circle is your sine value. Or we could do a semi-rotation of pi. You get a Y coordinate of zero. Or we could do a full rotation of two pi. And again, get a sine coordinate of zero. Those are the possible values within our interval from zero to two pi. So we have theta equals zero, no rotation at all pi, a semi-rotation, and 2 pi, a full rotation. These are the values that make the derivative zero, and they are all in the domain of the original function, so those are our three critical numbers. Moving on to problem three, f of x equals tangent x. Let's start with the derivative, f prime, the derivative of tangent, is just secant squared x. Again, secant is one over cosine, so secant squared x is one over cosine squared x. Again, we would ask where doesn't this derivative exist? The answer would be where cosine is zero, but again, the original function has cosine in its denominator. So wherever the derivative doesn't exist, where cosine is zero, the original function also doesn't exist, and critical numbers have to be in the domain of the function. So we have to ask then, where does this equal zero? Because those could also be critical numbers. Well, this doesn't equal zero anywhere. One divided by anything is non-zero. So in fact, there are no critical numbers of the tangent function. Again, this is because finding where the derivative is undefined only produces numbers where the original function is undefined, and setting the derivative equal to zero produces no solutions at all. All right, we are moving on to problem four, g of theta equals four theta minus tan theta. Let's start with the derivative g prime. The derivative of four theta is four, and the derivative of tan theta is secant squared theta. Again, we could go through the yarn of finding where the derivative doesn't exist. Again, it comes from cosine in the denominator, but in the original function, there is a cosine in the denominator. So there's no places where the derivative doesn't exist that are in the domain of the original function. So we can just move on to setting the derivative equal to zero. Setting the derivative four minus secant squared theta equal to zero, lets us write that four equals secant squared theta, but secant squared theta is just one over cosine squared theta. We can then invert both sides to get that one fourth equals cosine squared theta. Then take the square root of both sides to find that one half plus or minus equals cosine theta. Remember, we need the plus or minus because positive one half squared is one fourth, but so is negative one half squared. That's also positive fourth. Okay, so where is cosine theta plus or minus one half? Ideally, you know this because you have the unit circle memorized. You have this whole thing memorized. Where is cosine equal to plus or minus a half? Well, cosine is the x coordinate, remember? So right here at pi over three, it is positive half. And then right over here at two pi over three, cosine is negative half. Cosine is also negative half over here at four pi over three, and cosine is positive half over here at five pi over three. Those are all of the solutions in our interval from zero to two pi. So there are our four critical numbers where cosine is plus or minus a half, and that forces the derivative to be zero. Next, problem five, which has a similar look, f of theta equals theta minus two cosine theta. Let's start with the derivative. The derivative of theta is one, and the derivative of minus two cosine theta is plus two sine theta. Remember, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we end up having two negatives, which produces a positive. Okay, this derivative exists everywhere because sine is defined everywhere. So all that remains is to set the derivative equal to zero. 1 plus 2 sine theta equals 0. Subtracting 1 and dividing by 2, we get that sine theta equals negative 1 half. Again, you should recall the unit circle in your head and see where is the y coordinate negative half. Well, right down here at 11 pi over 6, and also down here 
at 7 pi over 6. But we must be careful, because our interval here also includes some negative numbers, up to negative 2 pi, so we also have to consider how we could get to these same places with negative angles. We could go negative 1 pi over 6 to get, again, that sign of negative half. Or we could go negative 5 pi over 6 to again get the sign of negative half. So that was negative pi over 6 and negative 5 pi over 6. If you're not sure how to quickly get those negative values, it's just like the complement of the positive values. 11 pi over 6 is pi over 6 short of a full rotation, which means negative pi over 6 would get me to the same place. Here is our final problem, g of x equals sine squared of 2x. We will need the chain rule here, so let's take the derivative. g prime of x equals the outside function is the squaring. So we bring that power of 2 down in front as a factor, and then reduce the power by 1. So 2 sine of 2x but then we must multiply by the derivative of the inside function, the thing that was being squared, that was sine. We have to multiply by its derivative, which is cosine. But then there's a function inside that, so we also have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And now we're done, that is our derivative. This is just a product of sine and cosine and some real numbers, so this derivative exists everywhere, and we just have to set it equal to zero. Setting it equal to zero will allow us to divide out that factor of four, and so we have this equation. Sine of 2x multiplied by cosine of 2x equals zero. For this equation to be true, we need the sine function to be zero or the cosine function to be zero. Let's start with sine. The input is 2x. What could 2x be to make sine of 2x zero? Well, it could be zero, or it could be a half rotation of pi, or it could be a full rotation of 2 pi. You might think uh, maybe 2 pi is outside of our interval, but it's not, remember, because we need x to be in this interval. If 2x equals 2 pi, x equals pi, which is in this interval, so just be careful. Similarly, let's think about cosine. If cosine of 2x is 0, what is 2x? Well, 2x could be a semi-rotation of pi over 2, or it could be 3 pi over 2. We might also think of listing 5 pi over 2, but once you solve for x, that would be 5 pi over 4, which is outside of our interval. So these are the possible solutions. Let's divide everything by 2 and get our critical numbers for x. It could be 0, it could be pi over 2, it could be pi, it could be pi over 4, or it could be 3 pi over 4. That's a whole lot of critical numbers, but those are the possible values of x in this interval that make this function's derivative equal to zero. Before I show you the bonus problems, here's one last scroll through the problems we just did and their solutions. Here are your three bonus problems. If you found this video helpful and want to help me continue to make high quality calculus content, please consider becoming a channel member to support Wrath of Math and get access to additional exclusive calculus content, including the full solutions to this set of six problems. I've shown you three, three are hidden. You can see the full solutions if you become a channel member. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.